So here it is, boys. Did my cup holders and my change tray back here. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're back in the garage again, and this week what we're gonna be doing is uh, changing the illumination on the IS300. As you know, this car comes with that ugly ass orange illumination. I'm gonna change that all to white today, so stay tuned. So we're inside the car. As you can tell, the cluster, the climate control, the radio, and everything on this car is all amber. And this amber orange color is pretty ugly and dated these days, along with the shifter right here the actual navigation unit buttons I have down here. The Over here is the ring around the key. It's all amber. Most of these you could change out. Most of them are either 74 bulbs that you could just swap out pretty easily or some neo bulbs in the case of the climate control. So there's like three neo bulbs in there that you just twist and take out. And the uh, same with that little ring over here. That's only a 74, I believe, along with the cigarette lighter. So we're gonna go ahead and change all that out today, uh, along with the cluster lights here. On the cluster, as you can see, I have those orange cluster lights. We're gonna go ahead and take all those out and change them to white. And then down here, the cigarette lighter or the ashtray also has a 74 bulb. One of those two is hard to take out and you gotta rig it. And then we got inside the glove box, there is a 74 bulb in there also that we gotta take out. And uh, as far as the cigarette lighter goes, I'm gonna go ahead and just replace this whole cigarette lighter assembly. Mine's all busted loose and it's brittle. So I ordered a dual USB with voltage readout so I can actually monitor the car's voltage and also charge through USB. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there instead of the cigarette lighter. The radio, unfortunately, I don't think uses regular bulbs. The radio might use like LEDs inside, so we're gonna have to take that apart and do the radio separately. Up here on the nav screen, I've got the, the little buttons up here for the open and close. Those also light up amber. I'm gonna eventually replace that screen with an Android screen, so we're not gonna care about the screen or anything. Uh, this thing, I'm gonna not replace uh, any of the LEDs, and I'm gonna leave them because I'm gonna eventually just take this out and get double cup holders when I go with my Android tablet up here. So first thing we're gonna do is take apart this cluster. So you just take apart this trim up here. So there's two little screws that you get right up here and then one right below the ignition right here. And that takes this black panel off. Once you take that black panel off, there's three screws that keep the cluster on. While we're in there, we'll take apart the ignition ring. There's one 74 bulb in there. The rest of this stuff is pretty easy as far as taking all this stuff out. You can take the armrests off to access all this stuff over here. First thing we wanna do is pop the ashtray and the cigarette lighter section off. That pops off pretty easily. That's not that's only held on by a compression fit in there. You could just pop off this lower panel too and then start taking apart all this stuff right here just to access this stuff down here. Once this panel comes out, it just, just pops right out here. It will take a little bit of wiggling to get out. You gotta unplug the dimmer on this side. It's best to just kind of tilt it, not to scratch anything, and just pull it out sideways like this. Put it out of the way. You got three more screws right here. Cluster tilts down and just pull it out. You got two plugs on the back side just to pull apart. So you guys that have been following me know that I'm a pretty much a madman when it comes to stuff like this. If you saw in one of my last episodes, I had this cluster taken apart, changed the mileage to match my car. So while I was in here, I noticed there was the security light has a red LED. So since I'm already in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that and I'm gonna put this blue LED that I got. I found this thing, I bought it in April of 2003. I'm a freaking madman. I've had this thing for 18 years, just as old as this cluster. But anyway, so I'm gonna just desolder this LED out of here and I'm gonna put the new one in there before I put all this back together. So this is a manual cluster. So the manual cluster has the security light on the fuel side right below the odometer. If you have an automatic, it's actually on the other side with the RPMs. So you just find the two traces on the back side here. The radio LED goes through. Just use the, the solder sucker and the soldering iron. Just heat it up and then suck it out. The ground trace is always gonna be harder on this because it's got so much more surface area to heat up. 
go solidly on there. So I'll try to heat it up from the front side, see if I could do any better. Got it out a little bit. Got that baby out, so get the new one in there. Just make sure you line it up correctly as far as the anode and the cathode. The cathode, which is the negative, has a little slit on the end, just in case you want to test it with your multimeter so you don't have to redo it. It's correct. Just want to bend it, get it as close to the original position as possible and height so you have all the clearances. It's good, nice and solid. Just clip your leads and you're done here. So I've got one of the automatic clusters taken apart and, and it has that purity light which is mounted on the back of this guy. I took it off right here, board right here. And what it is, is it's got this little plug that plugs into the circuit board, but it's just got a surface mount red LED on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my air solder, remove that, and I'm gonna put one of my blue LEDs in there. It's not exactly one that fits into here, but it should work. I might end up putting two of them side by side to see if it does work. Got that out, burnt that thing up a little bit, but I'm gonna clean up the solder pad now and then get the new one in. So I got these two LEDs soldered in here and it lights up blue. So we're good here, so I'll put this back in. So now we'll have a blue security light on this cluster. So if you guys are doing the bulb change out on an automatic cluster, and there are two little orange LEDs that are right here and right here, it lights up that little LCD there. So that actually lights up orange. If you really wanted to go full send, you go in here, change those two out to white or blue or whatever cluster color you want. So that way it doesn't light up orange anymore. So I've got these LEDs that I got on Amazon. I've been hunting for the correct ones for a while, especially the 74 model that fits the 24 socket. So I finally found the ones I like, the, the ones that got the most brightness. The 194s were actually these Yida Masters I found on Amazon. There are 20 of them for like 10 bucks. And then the 74s were this Bishu brand that I got on Amazon. So I've got a link to these in the description if you guys are looking for the exact same ones. And the reason why it was so hard to find the 74s was I needed the ones that had the right thickness to fit in to the 24 sockets because the 24 bulb is not as easy to find as a 74 bulb. So I finally found one that had the right chips, the right quality solder, and it fit in that socket. So I ordered them and they worked. So those are the ones I want to put in today. So on the cluster itself, it's pretty easy to identify the illumination bulb. So the three big ones in here are the, the main bulbs. These are the 194s. So you just pop these all out. The two 24s, which we're going to replace with 74s, are the two blue ones. So those are pretty obvious because they made them a different color than the normal indicator ones. So you just take those out also. So the first thing we'll do is, you know, we'll just pull out these orange bulbs, stick in the 74s so they fit nice and tight. If yours don't fit as tight, you might want to just take a little screwdriver or a little something with a tip on it and just kind of bend the contacts a little bit inside so that it grabs it better. And at this point, we don't care which side the bulb is turned, because if we end up putting it in the wrong way, we'll just turn it around when we test it. So you got a 50-50 chance of putting it in correctly, just because of the LED polarity. All right, so I'll plug up my bench tester now, and hopefully they all light up. If they don't, we'll just turn them around. Plug up my illumination wires. We'll go turn off the lights and see how this looks. So it doesn't look that bad in person. There are a little bit of hot spots around the E and the middle of the gas gauge around where the odometer is. And since this is a manual cluster, you don't have that LCD, so you don't see much there. And then over here on the one to three, it's pretty bright in real life. But overall, like the speedometer is all pretty evenly lit. So it's good enough for what it is. It's better than that amber. So you gotta get to the lock cylinder now. So we'll take that apart so we can change the bulb in there. So this thing comes apart with one screw right here. My dash is melting like crazy now. I need to refinish that other dash so I can get that in here. So 
the ring comes apart. There are two harnesses. I think one's for the actual immobilizer and the other one's the bulb on the back side. All right, so we'll go ahead and just unplug this, pull out this bulb. It's probably hot from running all this time. It comes out pretty easily. And then just stick in your new bulb. So pretty straightforward, just reattach it and you'll be good. All right, so I'll go ahead and put the ring back together now. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cluster back in before I do the rest of the dash. So to do the glove box, all you have to do is pop this little thing right here, which is the little plunger to keep the switch and the bulbs inside there. So it's pretty easy and straightforward to take this one out. Before you put it back in, you want to test the polarity first. Yeah, it only comes on when the parking lights are on, so make sure your parking lights are on to test it, but it's working, so we'll go ahead and finish this up. To remove this vent and navigation unit, there's a little cover right here that you pop off, and under it there's two screws that hold this whole thing in. A lot of people don't know about that, even if you have the regular cubby or the flat thing. Even under the felt, there's two screws under here. A lot of people don't know that, and they, they end up breaking the bracket behind here, so just keep that in mind. So once we take that out, there's two 10 millimeters up here, and then there's two more 10 millimeters down here that keep the radio on, and then we can take the whole assembly out, including the climate control. In order to get to the light and the shifter and that snow and power light, you gotta take apart this whole armrest assembly. So to do that, there's actually two screws on either side up here with a little cap on it. And then you gotta take apart the whole armrest back here. So to take apart the armrest, you actually have to take apart two covers on either side of here. I've got one missing right here. I actually ordered a replacement already that I'm gonna put back on. You can take apart these little 12 millimeters here on both sides and then you can pull this whole armrest off. There's two screws in here that you take out and then the whole assembly comes up. So now that we got it all apart, you can access this little plate here. So to take this plate off, you just have to just unbolt your shifter, wiggle this around and you can pop it out. Uh, that way you can access the switch over here to get to that. Over here is the 74 bulb for the side illumination here that you can just access without popping anything off. But to get the switch out, you got to pop this whole cover off. So I know earlier I said I wasn't going to replace this, but I might as well since I'm already in here. This is a regular 74 bulb. Put it in there, just check, make sure it turns on, and it does. So we got this stuff all out of the car now. So my cigarette lighter, I explained earlier, this thing all busted up, all the clips and everything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just remove that. I gotta open that hole a little bit bigger to fit this new USB socket that I bought. This thing popped out of the ashtray right here. So this is a regular 74 bulb that we're gonna change out. This is the original bulb socket thing that goes cigarette lighter. If you even still have this on yours, most people or probably in my situation where it's all brittle and broken. It is a 74 bulb, but it's weird because it's actually soldered in there. There's actually two pins that go in there and you can look on here, you can see those two little uh, nubs that are sticking out. They're actually the metal pins that go straight through there. So the easiest way is just to pull those out, use some needle nose or something, pull those things out. There's two little compression clips on the side. And you can pull that bulb out and then you could rig a 74 bulb in there and make the connections to these little pins right here to make it work. My other switches here, which are the seat warmer and the track on off right here, uses a Neo bulb. So I've got a set of those Neos here. I'm gonna change those out now too. These Neo bulbs that I got, even though the right size, they don't fit these holes on the seat warmer as well, so they don't stay in. So my only other option is to pull the LEDs out. If you can see those little, they're held on by these little pins that kind of just wrap around there. You could unwrap that, pull that thing out of the socket, and then stick it into this socket. So 
was able to retrofit those old sockets with the new LEDs in them. Pretty easy. You just got to be patient and pull it out with some tweezers or something small. But I got it out, so I'm going to test to make sure they work. So I did a little bit more research on these. And the best way to get those new Neo bulbs to distribute well is to actually paint the inside of these with like some white paint. So I've got this white touch-up paint. Go ahead and just stick the little brush in there and try to paint the inside of this white. And then after that, I'm gonna pop these little stickers off right here, take a piece of sandpaper and lightly sand it so I can remove some of the orange but not really mess up the lettering or the black around it. So I was able to paint the inside of these, if you can see right there. Uh, try to get that back wall right here directly in front of the LED because remember these LEDs, they're directional so they just go straight in so you want them to reflect off that back wall. So what you want to do is take a razor blade or like an X-Acto knife and just get into the corner of this thing and try to lift it up. Once you get that out, you just take a little piece of 600 grit sandpaper just sand it down lightly. Don't go too hard on it. Sand enough to get it off, but don't, you don't need to completely get all the orange off because you just need to get it off around the letters. Clean it off with some alcohol. Just to make sure you get all the dust and crap off it because even the adhesive area, we're gonna have to put some adhesive down to glue it back in. Since you have this thing open, you might want to get some more paint in there too, some polish, There's better access on this side. First seat one I did, somehow when I used the alcohol on it, it took off a lot of the paint and it left the black. The black looks like it's on another layer and I kind of scratched it up a little bit when I put it through, but it is shining clear through. So I might just paint that white to see how that looks. So it looks like the trick is to lightly sand this with some sandpaper just to scuff it a little bit. And the alcohol takes that paint layer right off without taking the other layer with the black on it, which is perfect because then now we could just get all the paint out from the grooves of that black so it's clear. You could either leave it clear or paint it white to make it more opaque. Got that white nice and coated in there so that it gets a good reflection. So I popped the snow buttons out and the power button and Behind there wasn't really any orange, it's mostly white. There is a little bit of orange in there, but most of it is white, so it, the letters are actually shining through white. So this Neo bulb is the same diameter and everything, and it fits pretty well, but it doesn't twist on because the legs are a little different. So I'm about to transfer the LED over to the old mount, just like I did the other ones. I'm gonna use some of this 3M adhesive to get all these little stickers back on. I'm just gonna spray it onto the cardboard, put a little bit around the edges, stick those covers back on. So we're gonna go ahead and take apart this thing and work on this guy right now. So you take the thing out, you'll see that it is a little bit bigger than the hole. So you just gotta, you could try to thread it all the way through, but I doubt that's gonna work. The easiest way is just to take a Dromo and just trim about an eighth of an inch or less off of the inside. a little bit with the Dromo it's perfect. If you guys ever use a Dromo always get a little foot pedal makes life way easier to use the Dromo on this thing. So for the wiring for this new socket that I put in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the positive and the negative off the original one except the original one has it at this angle what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the negative out. I'm gonna leave that without a cover. I want the positive to have the cover on it so that way it doesn't short out. So the negative is the white and black wire. So I'm just gonna pop that thing out of the pen and just slide the fade socket out. So now that I got it out, so what you wanna do is just, there's a positive and negative back here. So you just slide the positive one into there and then the negative one you just plug in and just let it hang out here on the side. The positive one, you just slide right there. Might have to turn it away from the the negative pin. I'm not worried about the ground shorting out or anything. I'm just worried about the positive shorting out. And we are perfect. 
So for the radio and the climate control, you gotta take apart all this stuff around here. So you can pop the cover off and access the bulbs on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the brackets, separate the radio and get in there. So you can see in here, you got these three right here are the big neos, main illumination. These are for the clock. And these are the ones that they usually leave two hot spots, so you have to find a way to diffuse those. This one over here looks like the seatbelt warning, and this is the hazard button uh, illumination right over here. So I ended up testing it, and everything works fine. These things were kind of suspect uh, as far as the illumination goes. I had to actually pop it off to see, make sure they were on, the three big ones. The two clock ones actually turned out fine. The hot spots aren't as bad as they look in the pictures in real life. I ended up swapping one of my last few Neo bulbs for the hazards too, just to light that up. I'm gonna leave the seatbelt one because I, I don't really care about that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the face of this off, see what kind of LEDs they use in here. So you just pop off the knobs. So not pretty easy to take off, just kind of like the 2IS one. And then you got the screws on the back of here. I'm gonna take those out and then we can see the face and see what the LEDs they use on this one. So I looked up the board and I checked it against my 1206 LEDs and these are the exact same 1206 LEDs that I'm using for my 2IS navigation. Uh, there are about 32 white ones on here and then two green ones for the CD changer eject. I'm gonna have to order some white ones and swap them in here. So I'll mess with this later on a separate project. So I took this navigation switch out just to see what it's like. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pop that thing out. It looks like it's just clipped in there like all these other switches. So I got that board out of that switch pain in the ass to try to pop that thing out just because of the sides there. So it looks like all it is is a regular radio LED. Luckily I have a bunch of these white radio LEDs, but that should be a pretty easy solder job. So on the center console here, I noticed there's this little plastic thing down here, sort of a little change tray. Or What I want to do is I want to put a little radio LED on top of here and kind of light this area up. So I've got my replacement center console, the 2001 one, with that little gray trim. I still have to refinish this and the dash. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and swap the cup holder over because this thing is basically useless. The navigation on this car is useless anyway, so I'm going to just go ahead and do that. And I remembered that I had a bunch of these radio LEDs from my headlight project. I had a whole stack of these I bought for like five or six bucks on Amazon, so I'm going to use those white LEDs. This thing is basically useless right here. The, the little plastic thing on the bottom, that joystick broke off. So for the cup holder, I'm gonna go ahead and drill two holes for the radio LEDs in there. I need to put it on a location where, where it doesn't interfere with the spring and the hinge mechanism. For this one, it's pretty easy. I'm just gonna drill one hole right here above the top, right above, so you can't really see it, but it still lights up pretty well. So I mounted the LED pretty well on here, nice and tight. I'm gonna go ahead and get some epoxy on here. Same with the cup holder. I'm gonna put a piece of tape on the inside to get the LEDs a little bit more flush. And then once they get flush, I'm gonna put some of that clear JB weld on the back side just to hold the LEDs so they don't go anywhere. You guys know me, I like to keep everything looking OEM, so I ended up soldering that old cigarette lighter light plug onto some wires. I'm going to attach that to the light back here for this side, and then I'm going to put this little OEM harness right here for the cup holder so I can remove that if I have to separately from there.
Oh yeah, can't get more OEM looking than that. Plug on this end, got the little jumper out here for the cup holder, and then got it straight into the LED back here. So I'm gonna reassemble everything and then test it out in the car now. So here it is, boys. Did my cup holders and my change tray back here. Those LEDs are a little bit uh, cooler than the rest of these LEDs. We got the shift gate, we got the switches for the track and the seat. We still have the orange radio there. We have the climate control, we have the clock. The clock turned out pretty good. It's not as spotty as some people's glove box in there. A little bit cooler than the rest of these. We got the two lights for the navigation over there. And of course the dash. The dash turned out pretty well right there. So in a later video, I'm gonna go change all these orange uh, radio ones to white. I already ordered that stuff. So I found out the lock and the auto windows also orange. So I gotta change that out. Pretty happy with it. Just gotta change the radio and we should be good for the full white conversion. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in all the way to the end of this video. It got a little bit long, but I hope you found it useful, especially uh, getting all the little details on getting all those stinking white lights done. And even though it didn't turn out as nice as like OEM 2IS LED white, uh, it is better than nothing, I guess. So if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you guys haven't subscribed to your channel, go ahead and subscribe to your channel and stay on top of all my little builds and projects for the IS300, the IS250, the Sienna, or whatever else I'm doing around the house or with cars. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys next time.